to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Let this be a moment of visitation in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Pastor, I have said thank you, but I will say thank you again. Thank you for this opportunity and then thank you for your obedience. Thank you, sir. The Lord honor you in the name of Jesus Christ. Please, I'd like you to be sensitive uh, this final session because you will not only hear, you will not, indeed you will have. In the name of Jesus, the apostle said, the things that we have heard, the things that our eyes have seen, the things that our hands have handled, even of the word of life, this is what we teach. So I pray that your heart be sensitive to what God is doing. I'm going to just give this final session will be a charge because there is a very strong impartation that must come upon your destiny I'm going to be praying for the sick and then I'm going to pray be praying for all those who are bound you cannot go back home the way you came hallelujah praise the name of the Lord please be seated We're discussing the laws of the spirit and um, we began to talk about the law of faith please do well to get these teachings and listen to them again and again and again and again send them to your loved ones so that they can experience the grace of God when it has to do with the matters of the spirit and the matters of the kingdom in truth your being enlightened as far as secular enlightenment is concerned can only help you go so far spiritual things will require more than being educated more than being exposed because these are matters of the spirit the Bible says the spiritual man, the carnal man cannot understand the things of the spirit because they are spiritually discerned. Isaiah 29 and verse 11 explains a mystery about this Bible, about this book. Isaiah 29, please give it to us in verse 11. It says the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed, not closed, sealed which men deliver to one that is learned saying read this i pray thee and he said i cannot why not because it is not opened you can open it but it is still sealed next verse and the book is delivered to him that is not learned saying read this i pray thee 
and he said i am not learned so there is a realm where both the learned and the unlearned have to submit to the rabbi because this is of the spirit hallelujah are we blessed so we are learning jesus as we explore the laws of the spirit as we explore the mysteries i call them of the kingdom this is very very powerful we dealt with the law of faith i won't go back there for the sake of time but please understand that faith is not just mere speech faith has to do with our conviction and not you don't have to there are specific qualities about god that must be believed number one his integrity number two his ability hallelujah praise the name of the lord the lord is opening my eyes and i'm seeing a dove this is what i am seeing i'm seeing a dove just hovering around this place remember every time the spirit of god is moving it means there is darkness in that place because he moves to produce light and the spirit of the lord hovered around the face of the waters i'm seeing a dove move and i'm seeing the number 11 and the lord is saying that he's taking away reproach from 11 specific people who we'll continue teaching but i just saw that ability of the spirit is the ministry of the spirit and some of these people may be here some of them may be at the overflow but right now i pray in the name of jesus that every one of such people that is under the influence of any spirit that is not of the christ let there be liberty for you let there be liberty for you in the name of jesus pastor all men are really the same except for three factors i was just thinking about this this is not my message it's just a strong contemplation all men are the same except for three factors number one the quality of the information and the revelation you have access to this is the first distinguishing factor this is what separates men into spiritual cadres. All men are essentially the same, except for the quality of the spiritual information that you have access to. Number two, the quality of relationships that provide the leverage for you at the level that your enlightenment has taken you to because you see knowledge is like a ladder when you rise there you will find out you are not alone there are other people too there so knowledge lifts you and then there are relationships that come in honor of that enlightened version it can make a difference in your life and then number three the quality and the dimension of spiritual empowerment that is upon your life. The quality and the dimension of spiritual empowerment that is upon a life is what really makes the difference. Remove these factors and all men are exactly the same. Predictably the same. That means... That the moment I submit myself to a body of spiritual knowledge, I begin to exempt myself from certain possibilities. There are possibilities that may not happen again on the strength of that light. And then there are other possibilities that will now begin to happen. So, when you find out that two people seem to be so different, it is not really the god factor as it were because the same lord is rich unto all but they have been separated into cadres of possibilities on the strength of the quality and the kind of information they have accessed 
the relationships they have that provide leverage and a system of advantage and then number three the engracing the kind and the quality of empowerment that is upon them i believe in the name of jesus christ that this is what this conference is achieving access to light information access to strategic alliances and relationships that will provide both spiritual and physical leverage and then that god will introduce into your life graces that compel situations and circumstances to begin to change when this happens you are called a wonder there is a name for whoever possesses these qualities a sign and a wonder hallelujah so we discuss the law of faith as one of the spiritual laws that can activate possibilities the realm of the spirit you are brooding over every darkness you are causing light to shine You were causing light to shine from darkness. Please listen. What you are about to learn in the next few minutes, I pray from the depth of my heart that you will place value on it. What I'm about to show you is what has changed my life. And it's what will change the life you will become master over situations and circumstances when you learn these mysteries these are keys a door does not open because you are knocking a door opens because there is a key hallelujah you can weary yourself in front of a door and a small key can open a big door and if that key is missing as big as you are, you can stand in front of that door at the mercy of that key. Praise the name of the Lord. The law of impartation. This is one of the mysteries of the kingdom that controls the supernatural. This is one of the keys that can turn ordinary people into signs and wonders now according to god's system of operation please listen men on earth cannot achieve the purposes of god in the strength of the flesh the bible clearly tells us that the flesh the body is limited limited in various ways limited because men are limited because men are not omniscient are we together yes and limited because men are not omnipresent these are the qualities god did not share with man so even though we have dominion our dominion is shared dominion we depend on the source like the moon gets its light from the sun are we together now yes so the limitation not having these qualities has a side effect we cannot be efficient enough to produce God's dimension of results on the strength of the flesh. And so he created a system to remedy it. The name of that system is what we call grace. Grace is not about salvation. Grace is not even just about favor. Grace is the name given to every good and perfect gift that comes from above given to the saints but accessed only through the office of the Christ it is called grace so mercy is grace anointing is grace faith is grace every spiritual quality that resides in the Christ and given to the saints only through the office of the person jesus christ is called grace are we together so when you find people who begin to manifest certain dimensions of exploits 
among the many things that are at work in their lives are the levels and the dimensions like pastor would say of the graces at work in them you can know the grace upon you by the physical possibilities that recycle around your space and you can know when it grows because everything on earth is truly a report card it is speaking to you your challenges are speaking to you your results are speaking to you they continue to tell you the kind of grace that is upon your life hoping they will change is a waste of time you must introduce into your life the grace grace is like currency everything can be bought it just depends on how much you have just because you are anointed does not mean you it can purchase every spiritual reality how god anointed jesus of nazareth not that he was anointed look at the extent if i have a thousand dollars it can buy me something some things in port Harcourt. but if i'm looking for a car most likely a thousand dollars will not buy a car not because it is not money it is not money enough to purchase that are we together now so when the bible says grace and peace be multiplied he knows that you will confront realities in your life that your current level of grace cannot obtain it please follow me carefully now the way god remedies for this is not by anointing everyone that's not what he does he knows the dimensions of him that are required for victory on earth so the way he does it is that the moment he sees israel in need of that grace he finds jacob a man and he enters a personal covenant with that man through the sacrifice of alignment and he supplies a dimension of his grace upon that man for the sake of those who are calling and you call him for that grace he will refer you to that man as the career of that possibility and for as long as that person is alive you will never obtain that grace ignoring that covenant please understand this i want to show you a very deep mystery <laughs> paul has an encounter with jesus and you would think that everything he needed for ministry would be given by jesus directly jesus is talking to him and refers him back to a man to continue his growth process so men become spiritual systems on account of this covenant that they have with god so if it is the grace for faith there is a man on earth today who has entered that covenant with God and for as long as he's alive you will not ignore him and walk in that level of faith so pick any man of faith from anywhere in the world it will still be traced back to that spiritual system of administering faith this is not human worship I'm showing you a very powerful mystery there is no man on earth today who truly walks in the healing ministry who ignores Benny Hinn because currently on earth now He's not just a human being. He is the spiritual system that is responsible through partnership with the Holy Spirit for administering that grace. So no matter how God trains you, eventually he will create a path. If he wants to bless you, no matter what dealing you have in the secret place, he must make your path to cross. There are men like that. The Bible says there are bodies terrestrial. And there are bodies celestial that even among the stars one differed from another in glory until Reinhard Bonke died he was the spiritual system that represented evangelism are you seeing that now there was no territory that rejected him and that grace came upon him from Billy Graham. Many of you may not know, Billy Graham is one of the only ministers that preached in North Korea. We ignore these truths and we continue to recycle pain and limitation and mediocrity in our lives. When Jesus was born, watch this. You've heard me say it, Pastor, jesus was under a closed heaven by him t years your jesus the logos of god could not open his own heavens 
until he traced a man called John the prophet watch this Jesus you thought because he was the Lamb of God his heavens will be open the father was watching because there was an ordinance that must be fulfilled it's amazing how strict the realm of the spirit is for one violation of spiritual order you will you can pay for years this is why enlightenment is powerful so jesus looks for john and when john saw him a code was given to john in the wilderness every time john baptized he looked up the heavens did not open he said go away john was not just a baptist he was identifying he was looking for someone that's why baptism stopped the moment he met jesus there's no record of him baptizing anyone now watch this please follow me john did not just go around baptizing no he was using it as a spiritual strategy to look for someone so jesus comes and he says behold the lamb that takes away the sins of the world jesus would have said wow you are really a sharp prophet i applaud your discernment now G john is standing there pastor and john said i am not worthy even to untie the latchet of your shoes and jesus makes a very profound statement suffer it to be so you want to destroy my ministry if i do not submit to what you represent because until i came you are the one giving the keys to this place and not even me can violate what you represent watch this and john picks jesus dips him in water brings him out and your bible says and the heavens open and god spoke and said now this is my beloved son what was he before The Bible never called him son until that happened. Satan was not even interested in him. When he failed at birth, he left him. But when that proclamation happened, the Bible says his heavens were opened. Hmm. May God deliver the body of Christ from ignorance. I show you why many well-meaning people are under closed heavens many sincere prayer warriors people who love Jesus with all their hearts let me tell you the truth I'm going to make a few statements I pray it does not offend you I will explain myself and when you listen later you understand but in the name of Jesus I want you to find a way of believing this all men are equal in Christ but all men are not equal This is not human worship. I'm not teaching this nonsense people do around. Believe me. I'm saying by reason of the sacrifice of alignment, there are men who have entered a covenant with God. Not Old and New Testament. No. They have become the administrators of certain spiritual possibilities on earth and within territories. Are we together now? house on the rock as a, a spiritual institution has a covenant with god that has released a dimension of possibility excellence and leadership to the body of christ in truth no matter how you want to be excellent if god wants to help you he will bring you to contact that grace it's an ordinance there are people who started prospering be before they knew anything about finances they didn't even know why they were under a grace that was already they were drinking from that possibility before they started learning the laws he sent a word to jacob and it lighted upon israel is a mystery he does not send a word to israel no he sends it to jacob but he sees israel in jacob are we together now Kenneth Copeland today on earth is God's spiritual system of administering faith. There is a dimension of lifting that either through his teaching or through a direct impartation, that supply of the spirit must come to him. Women were designed to be gates in the spirit. 
anything you are doing at a global level if a woman does not support you this looks like error and many ignorant people will not understand and they'll begin to speak if a woman is not introduced into your space you will be very surprised when satan came he didn't go to adam he went straight to the woman there was something he knew that's why till today he's still disturbing the bride of christ unfortunately you are it so he continues to disturb you because you have assumed the posture of the bride of christ when jesus resurrected the first person to announce his resurrection was a woman because women are gates are we together yes sir even physically when men cry the governments just leave them alone and fix a date to meet them one day but when women cry and move around the government now pays attention and say well, what are you saying what exactly is it there's nothing called wailing men in the bible but there are wailing women that when they cry unto god there is something listen 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 impartation is a law that transfers spiritual possibilities to men to institutions and to territories please pay attention god hides his anointing in men he hides his anointing in institutions this is very powerful he hides his anointings even in physical territories there are territories on earth today you may argue it but it's true these territories have a covenant with god there are certain spiritual possibilities that happen to men just stepping their feet within those territories it is true there are institutions today that carry a certain dimension of god's grace if god wants to help you he will bring you in contact with those institutions but for this impartation, there are men. It is true. The ability to discern these men and the graces that they carry is real discernment. And it will open you up to a world of power and a world of possibility. The sea always had the ability to divide. But nobody was carrying the grace that will make it obedient. So the sea looked like it was disobedient until Elijah came. Are we together now? If the sea never parted, we will write a book and say seas don't part. Be careful when your experience concludes certain dimensions of God. Because there are graces sent to trivialize what you call mountain. Every challenge is relative to the grace that confronts it challenges are not generic please find a way of believing this sir the bible says saul the son of kish lost his donkey the father's donkey and for three days they kept going around searching for that donkey and the donkey could not have the discernment to go back home are we together but as soon as they meet this being called samuel they didn't even tell him what was wrong. The moment there was an eye contact, the donkey started going back home. What did the donkey see? Read your Bible. Samuel told them, he said, we came and said, don't talk to me about donkey. There are more serious issues. The donkey will go back home. Just because a man met a man. And God himself has respect for that system. When God rejected Saul as king, he would have anointed David to be the next king. But Saul, the bridge for that impartation was still negotiating. I mean, Samuel was still negotiating for Saul. And you thought God would say, no, I am God. I push you aside. Please bring another prophet. God had to come down himself and meet Samuel and explain things. He said, how long will you weep? seeing that i've rejected saul as king you are delaying another man's rising go to the house of jesse david would have been having dreams of the throne but a man not a demon was stopping his rising because he was the one giving that prophetic office are we blessed when i learned this 
I put my hand on my head, I say, my God, it means there are people who may never rise in life and may never rise in ministry because we have, uh, we have respectfully speaking, and I'm not just speaking to House on the Rock, I'm speaking to the body of Christ. We have this growing disdain for the sacrifices of people. There are people who are standing upon altars that drip with blood as a testament of their covenant and their pain and their many years of sacrifice with God. hallelujah yes. let me show you a scripture i don't know if we have the time to walk this out anyway Numbers chapter 27 from verse 18 to 20. Numbers 27. Let's hurry up because we have to pray in this place. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take thee Joshua, the son of Nun. Watch this. A man in whom the spirit, whom is the spirit and do what? That the spirit is upon him already. It's not an excuse. Read your Bible. God is saying the spirit of God is already on him. He says, but lay your hands on him. And you will see what happened. Next verse. And set him before Eleazar the priest and before all the congregation. And give him a charge of their sight. Take a man who already has received the spirit. Lay hands on him. Deuteronomy 34 and verse 9. Let's walk this please. Deuteronomy 34 and verse 9. Deuteronomy 34 and verse 9. Please read it if you are a Christian. One to read. And Joshua the son of Nun was full of what? The spirit of wisdom. For Moses had laid his hands on him. And the children of Israel hearkened unto him. And did as the Lord commanded Moses. Keep that scripture there. Full of the spirit of wisdom. The Bible just said he had the spirit. But there was a dimension he did not have. The spirit of wisdom that was required for leadership. And the honor that compels loyalty from followers. That's what Moses transferred to him. Do not make what you have received stop you from receiving what you need. Please find a way of believing this. Most times what we have received becomes a limitation for what we need oh i'm preaching he's preaching too i can sing he can sing too and you do not realize joshua would have said i already have the spirit even god said it to you and moses would look at him and say what a child you don't know how stubborn these people are that's why there is a grace that makes men hear you they don't hear you because you are speaking it's called a hear ye him anointing this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. He said, hear ye him. When that grace is on your product, it's impossible to remain small. Hear ye him compels situations and structures and systems to reckon with the dealings of God upon your life. Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom. Not for God desired to give him. For Moses laid his hands on him number two numbers <laughs> numbers chapter 11 we'll start reading from verse 16 goodness 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 and the lord said unto moses watch this gather unto me 70 men of the elders of Israel whom thou knowest to be elders of the people an elder had a has stamina he says and bring them to the tabernacle that they may stand here with thee go to verse 17 and I will come down and talk with thee there and I will take of the spirit which is upon thee and I will put it upon them and they shall bear the burden of the people that thou may not bear it alone I wrote a few scriptures so that we'll hurry up now go to verse 24 24 and 25 
I sense a strong anointing in this place already. 24 and 25. And Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord and gathered the 70 men of the elders of the people and set them round about the tabernacle. 25. And the Lord came down in a cloud and spake unto him and took of the spirit that was upon him and gave it to the 70 elders and it came to pass when the spirit rested on them they prophesied and did not cease look up this is one man carrying a spirit and yet he's quiet and part of that spirit came on 70 elders and none could keep quiet and stand yet one man was carrying it and he was quiet elders Part of what is in one man comes upon elders and they kept prophesying from morning till night. And yet one man was carrying it with self-control and just moving quietly. Believe me when I tell you all men are not equal. When Moses died, Satan was even looking for his dead body. He still want the dead body was still useful. The Bible tells us that impartation is a mystery that can transfer possibilities from one man to the other. That means, watch this, when God tells you he has designed for you a life of victory and glory, he says that on the strength of the provisions that he has made available to you, that if discerned can bring you into supernatural dimensions of grace now there are many believers who love god sincerely they love him with all their heart but they have not discerned that the results that we command depend on the dimensions and the quality of the grace that is upon our lives there are many people who would open the bible and say ah, he said is they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall be healed and now you go and behave like the sons of Skiva and now lay hands on the sick or lay hands on people that are demonized and you find out that nothing happens and you are wondering did the word lie the word did not lie there is an operation to it every one of you seated here listen to me the dimension you seek to enter there is a grace that is an usher that leads you there you don't go alone when you want to step into dimensions life will ask you what is the grace that is bringing you here otherwise you have no business here you want to sing like the great you want to prophesy like the great and so when god organizes this conference listen it's not just a time of teaching alone it's also a time of transference of graces now let me tell you something about the apostolic ministry follow this the hallmark of the, the apostles are not preachers apostles are spiritual administrators they coordinate spiritual activities within given territories according to the measure of grace given to them that means it is part of the apostolic and the prophetic office to supervise the health and the efficiency of the body of christ within a territory and they do that by enlightenment and then by introducing the graces they discern as cast within a territory so that the saints on the strength of that grace can rise to those dimensions so the first key to a true apostolic ministry is not teaching is discernment you can enter a city and spot on know the graces that are not available and the graces that need to be upgraded and that now becomes your assignment this is why the apostolic grace can become anything in any meeting based on the grace that needs to be supplied you can meet a man who is not a teacher but if that territory is looking for the teaching grace for that meeting he will change to become a teacher so that people can receive that grace are we blessed but that what comes upon you please find a way of believing this is what controls what is around you life does not just obey you there is a grace that when you possess it will cause men to come to you with their resources there is a grace that makes people loyal to you 
I'm a good person. That's not enough. There is a grace. It's the same grace that made the lions quiet when Daniel was there. They didn't do it for everyone. So we know, we know the grace is not upon everybody. Once upon a time, the apostles did not have this grace. They still had the heart, but the grace was not there. And their results showed that that grace was not upon them. And then a time came when Peter received. The Bible says even his shadow was healing the sick. There was a time in my life I prayed for the sick. They were not healed. Many preachers will not admit this. I prayed for people with HIV, cancer, barrenness. Nothing happened. I was a sincere preacher who loved the Lord. I had to come to a point in my life where I broke my pride and said, Do you know what? God, thank God for what God is doing in your life. But this grace is not there. And the thing with grace is, is that if it's not there, it's not there. Period. You can act like it is there. If it is there, it speaks instantly. I'm saying that because something is about to come on someone. So of your father, O Saul, you did not know that the grace for royalty and the prophetic will come upon you. But now that you encountered Samuel, when you honor men, you don't honor bodies. You honor the spiritual investment, the sacrifice of alignment that has made them custodians of those dimensions of spiritual reality. I wish I were lying. I would have just said I'm sorry. But this is true. Suffer it to be so. You've heard me say I'm a product of many anointings. Many anointings. And my assignment among other things is as God grants me grace to travel and strengthen the body of Christ and help the men and the women of God that God is using in every city. Among the many things is the ability to supply that grace. And I've been privileged by God to be given unique experiences. I don't talk too much about these experiences because I want the faith and the confidence of people to be built on the word. I have met the saints of old. I have met Jesus the Christ himself. Hello beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching